What is up guys, PK here, and as you guys know, here on this channel, we like to go deep. Real deep. Like, real, real deep. Like, like challenger deep, deep. Into game mechanics. What else did you think I was talking about? Anyways, normally we like to go real deep into the game mechanics, but in today's video, we are going to be a little tiny bit superficial. Why is that? Well, that's because be today, in one video, we're going to cover basic combat mechanics, which include, but are not limited to, power, attack speed, cleave, stagger, stagger count, stagger resistance, pushing, blocking, dodging, attack variations, attack sequences, attack modifiers, QQ cancelling, also known as weapon cancelling and or swap cancelling, Block cancelling, input timing, input queuing, dot damage, dot ticking, damage reduction, attack bosses, movement speed, and breakpoints. That's a lot of shit to cover in a single video, so uh... <laughs> Anyways, let's get into it. Okay, so obviously that's a lot of things to cover in a single video, but let's start out with Bawa! <laughs> which is obviously the most basic of all the combat mechanics, meaning that it's at, it's at the heart of literally everything you do in Vermintide. Most of you probably already know how it works, but nonetheless we'll cover it real quick uh, just for newer players. Now, power is determined by your level multiplied by a 10 plus the average of your five um, equipped items, right? So the average of these five, in other words, if they're all 300, you're going to get 300 here. And then there's uh, 10 for each of your levels added on top. You're level 35, that's 350. That means I'm at 650 power. Of course, on top of that comes any external modifiers applied by talents or whatever. So what is power? Well, well, power determines three things. It determines if you look in the armory, which is a mod, for those of you that don't have it or don't know, but it essentially a term determines, it is a multiplier to your both your base damage, your armor damage, your cleave limit and your stagger strength. Now, what that really means is the higher your power, first of all, the more damage you deal, second of all, the more enemies you hit with a single attack, and thirdly, the li higher the likelihood of you staggering said enemies will be. So, in other words, pretty goddamn important. So that's what power is, right? Then we have power stacking, of course. Stacking power is just the mechanic by which stacks. And that's mul multiplicatively. So when you have enhanced power, for example, which is really 7.5%, that would mean that I had 650 multiplied by 107.5% as my total power, which then if I then had a plus 10% power would then be an additional modifier, which would also take into account the fact that I already had a 7%. So the 10% would not now not just be 10% of 650, but it would be 10% of 650 multiplied by 107.5 power. That makes sense. Moving on, we got attack speed. So attack speed is one of those things that might seem pretty straightforward. You can apply it to both your weapon and you can also apply it to your charm. And you can also obtain it through several talents and different buffs like uh, Swift Lane, for example, on your uh, melee weapon. And attack speed, well, the thing about attack speed is it's kind of a it's kind of a bad definition of it, to call that attack speed. Really, what attack speed is is animation speed, and there's a crucial difference between the two. Let's say that I was gonna attack and swap weapons, yeah, right? And that you know that takes a little while, right? So, so because depending on the weapon, which we'll also get to momentarily, different weapons have different setups for when you can and cannot switch between weapons due to the animation. So if I were to do a fully charged attack with this weapon, and I try to switch, did you notice that after leaving, after the arrow leaves, there's a moment where no matter how much I spam, it's going to get queued in to the action, right? That's what's known as input queuing. And in that window, I'm unable to switch my weapon. However, let's say that I activate my switch lane here. See? Now that window is reduced by 25% because of my extra attack speed. So attack speed is not just how quickly you attack, it's literally how quickly you perform pretty much any animation, right? So it's how quickly you attack, it's how quickly you swap weapons, it's how quickly you reload. It's It, it determines a bunch of different things, and that's just good to know, because what that's gonna 
effect, so to speak, is something we'll get to momentarily. But first, let's talk a little bit about Cleave and Stacker. So again, Cleave, as you can see in the armory, is first of all determined by the Cleave limit damage of the attack of the weapon you're using, right? So that's this number right here. Now, that number is then taken in relation to the mass of any given minion. Right, so so I've, I've explained this before, and again, this is be very superficial just for newer players. I have a way more detailed guide on this if, if you're curious to get into the actual math and equations. But your 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 um, your cleave limit is going to be taken in relation to a minion's mass, and then on top of that, you have certain attack modifiers, which we'll also get to, um, which you can see in the armory that are on some attacks, like linesman, for example. So when it says linesman here, that means in the bestiary. When it also says linesman here, that means the linesman modifier works for this minion. And what it does is it takes 60% of the mass. In other words, it's essentially a cleave modifier, right? That determines how many minions you can attack with a single strike on a different, like on certain enemies. That's how cleave primarily is calculated. Then you have dagger, or not calculated. That's how it's determined. I think it's a better way to put it. Since again, we're going to cover a lot of things here, so we're going to... You know, we're only going to get at the base, really, here, right? So so you understand the core mechanics behind things, um, which can be really practical as a newer player. Because then you have Stacker. And Stacker, not to be confused with Stacker Count, because those are two completely different things. You have Stacker in here, right? Cleave Limit, Damage, slash Stacker is what you can see here. So this is the Stacker, stacker Strength of this given attack with... The amount of power that I have. Again, notice that these number will change depending on your power, right? So if I, if I was a newer player, I was max level, then these numbers would all be lower. But this is the stacker that I have with the power that I'm at currently, right? So that's a six. Now that is the stacker strength of my attack, and will also be deter determining things like uh, if you have, or she doesn't have that. Eh. If you look at some of the talents for temp HP, like here, staggering enemies with melee attack grants temporary health, health gain based on stagger strength. That is that number that you need to look at. So if you want to use that temporary HP talent, you want to find a weapon that has a high stagger strength. Now that stagger strength is then taken in relationship to a minion stagger resistance. And that can then determine, and again, of course, also modifiers such as Opportunist, which uh, you can see here. Opportunist increases the push strength by 50% when used against that attack an enemy, which is really stagger, actually, in this case. That doesn't matter. Um, but that increases your, your stagger strength, and really what that does is it increases the likelihood that your attack can cancel the animations of the enemy minion. Now, different enemy minions in different states have different... Stack of resistances, which is very hard, which is why I'm going to link a guide to that as well. I've talked about it before. But where you can see how much power do you need to increase your stagger strength high enough that you can stagger a given enemy in a given state. For example, if you've ever noticed when a monk is coming charging at your face, then it seems to be that no matter what you do to that monk, it's just... It doesn't care. You see what I mean? I mean, it cares if it dies. But uh, with the exception of dying, when it's in that state, it is incredibly hard to do anything about it, right? Or a Chaos Warrior, when it's heavy attacking, you just gotta move out the way, right? Or do you? Because again, that depends on your build. There are certain attacks or certain pushes that can, that can go through that with the right build, right? So that is stagger. That is how those things are determined, whether or not you can cancel the animation and stagger the minion in the middle of an animation. Uh, moving on, we got staggered count. Now, staggered count is very different uh, from what we were talking about before, because staggered count, eh, training dummy here, so staggered count can only be three things. It can be zero, it can be one, and it can be two. Now, staggered count, it's very important to, to know that these talents here, and any other talent than enhanced power does not affect your range damage, first of all. But let's start with melee. So, the, the default, that is to say, if I were to turn off every single one of my talents, and I were to attack this attack dummy, then, well, my first attack here, I'm not sure why it's not making any noise. That is yet another bug in the game currently. That is very, very weird. I don't know why it's not making any noise. But uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna champion on here, so ignore that. So, I do one light attack, right? And as you can see, it deals 9.5 damage. 
let's say that I did it fast enough. Oops, that was the same attack. I did a, a cancel in between, so that was the exact same attack. But now it deals 11.5 damage. The 19.5 was a crit. Let's say I did it three times. 13.25 damage. That is because a stagger count of zero, stagger count of zero, one, and two by default equals a, a, a plus amount of damage of zero percent, twenty percent, and forty percent. Welcome to the Swagger Dagger Squad. Christoph Peten Rider, thank welcome to the Swagger Dagger Squad, my friend. No, uh, so we got a zero, one, and two equals zero, twenty, and forty percent, right? So what it really means when you're reading one of these talents and it says Smiter, for example, the first enemy here is going to be considered staggered. In other words, that's going to be considered like this, 20, 20, and 40. Whereas Mainstay, for example, it's going to be considered 0, 40, and 60. Does that make sense? Depending on the stagger count. And keep in mind that most attacks add a stagger count plus one. Then you have ranged attacks. Ranged attacks are always, and I mean always, no matter what talent you select, they are always going to be like this. 20, 20, and 40. Okay, so that kind of ruined it. See? 20, 20, and 40. From the default damage value that you can see in the armory. That's how, how it works. So enhanced power will increase the damage because of it's a power buff. And these will not affect. If I were to do like this, it, it doesn't change the fact that it's 20, 20, 40. So that's how that works. And that is completely separate from whether or not the minion is actually staggered. Okay, so that's important to note. That that's the actual stagger determines whether the minion is like lying down and stuff like that. This is just the stagger count, and that is different. Those two are completely separate mechanics. Then you have blocking and dodging. So let's get the blocking. Obviously, you have stamina. That was weird. Okay, yeah, my game has been doing this recently, and it's really been pissing me off. Also, again, there's been so many bugs with the game recently. We'll try to champion on and ignore it. So, stamina. One, the first thing you need to know is that one shield equals two stamina. Okay? One shield is two stamina. So when you put on two stamina here, you gain plus one whole shield. A broken shield here being equal to one stamina, half a shield. Uh, and all attacks from enemy minions, depending on the difficulty, have a certain stamina damage that you block. The first thing you need to know is that you can block in a 300... Oh, that's not the minion I wanted to spawn. Circle, that's fine. When you're blocking, you're blocking in a 360 degree. It doesn't matter. Wow, I really feel like I should restart my game. As you can see, you automatically block in a 360 degree circle. Right? But then you also have an effective block which is better at blocking, which is determined in a cone with uh, with sort of with uh, armory. So whenever you look at a weapon in here, right, let's take the sword and dagger, just because we were using the sword and dagger. But you can see down here is the effective block angle is equal to 90 degrees. That means if you had a circle around you, you would have a 90 degree triangle that's exactly, you know, like this. You would have that straight in front of you of the circle so that angle of that circle is your effective block angle okay hope that makes sense and the rest will be your uneffective block angle and the modifiers you can see here 0 0.8 and 1.5 which vary from weapon to weapon one 0 0.5 and 1.5 being the most common or multipliers to the stamina damage of any given attack from an enemy minion that's going to be applied depending on whether or not it was inside or outside your effective block angle but then you have something here, which is called a uh, push block angle, right? Well, this is a very confusing way to put it, because uh, the thing is that these two are completely separate things, push and blocking. They're not the same. Okay, they, they have absolutely nothing to do with each other, the pushing and blocking angle. That is even more confusing. Um, but, but essentially, this adds 30% to two different modifiers, which have nothing to do with each other. The one being the area of your effective push, and the other being the area of your effective dodge, uh, effective block, which have nothing to do with each other. I want to make that very clear. 
Moving on. <laughs> That, that was blocking. Oh, wait, wait, really quickly. Of course, we also have block cost reduction and block cost reduction stacks uh, additively, uh, which means that 30 plus 30 equals 60% plus 30 equals 90%. No, fun, no funny business. Um, and it's obviously a 90% modifier that is again added to your to the stamina damage. So if it's then inside your effective block angle and you have a 0 0.5 modifier inside your effective block angle and you have 90% block cost reduction, <laughs> then really you're only going to take 5% stamina damage. That makes sense. Hope so. Moving on. Then we have, let's see, what else have we got? Attack variations, attack sequences, and attack modifiers. That's a good one. Let's start with attack modifiers. Attack modifiers are things that are added to your to the different attacks, such as linesman, like we talked about earlier. It could be an added critical hit chance. It could be a bleed. And these are only active on that specific attack, right? As you can see here, heavy attacks have extra crit and heavy attack one. Has, uh, this added cleave modifier which means you're gonna cleave more through certain enemies you could have things like um yeah extra critical hit chains that's one of the common ones tanks that's another modifier which specifically increases the cleave but versus separate enemies you also have them on certain ranged weapon you can see you have area damage uh, on the elf you could say you had uh, block uh, no burn damage uh, you're also obviously gonna have burn damage again on certain attacks with the uh, with the wizard uh, as the wizard so that's an, a different modifier. So there's a bunch of attack modifiers, and these are only the visible ones. There are also hidden attack modifiers. So what I want to tell you here is that, by default, no weapon in the game is capable of hitting two armor minions. That is, by the default for any weapon is that you can't cleave two armored minions with one attack. That is, with the exception of, of any dual wield weapon, because a dual wield weapon is really two separate weapons, Get us some uh, armored dummies here. So again, I know I've explained this before, but uh, this is going to be more like a, you know, instead of an in-depth, this is going to be more like a cover video that for all the, the newer players you see here. I can do that, no problem. And I know there's no sound, and it's very, very weird, and it's kind of creeping me out, but <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it, so we're going to champion on. Whereas if I did like this, you see? Not. It's never, ever going to hit two. Okay, this is creeping me out so much. Is it... Okay. This is so weird! Oh, the game is so broken right now. Then we have attack variants, uh, variations and attack sequences. So attack variations is uh, essentially how you're going to do different attacks on different minions. Okay, so obviously, uh, when you're fighting a Stormbreaker, for example, you can see these attacks aren't actually going through. The only reason it's dying is because the keep is on recruit, and uh, critical hits will actually deal damage to an armor target, even if there's no armor damage. Also, there's a bleed effect, but in general, you don't want to go for light attacks that have no... Or attacks in general, you don't want to go for attacks that have no armor damage versus armored enemies, right? Because then you can just... You can keep going. Absolutely nothing happens. So... But when I use heavy attack here, because it has armor damage, it dies pretty quickly. So that's how you want to vary attacks in that in that sense. But it can be a little more complicated than that. Then you can have something like a Chaos Raider. Now, a Chaos Raider is actually armored in the head. Which means, despite it dying, because this is fucking crude, you actually deal less damage to its head. And on its head, you're actually going to be using your armor dead. You see? See how that took four attacks? But I could actually one-shot it in the stomach, because it's not armored in the stomach, but it is, however, armored in the head. Right? So you want to vary which attacks you're using versus different enemies for that reason, because you want to make sure that you're using either the attack with the highest infantry or the highest armor damage to kill that given minion, depending on what type of minion we're talking about. Then we have attack uh, variations. No, wait, that's what I just talked about. We have attack sequences. Yeah, attack sequences. Now, I have a whole series of videos about this exact thing. So again, I'm only going to cover it very briefly. If you want to go into more detail, I suggest you go watch those videos. It, there's five of them. It's a whole uh, series where we go one hero, uh, one class at a time. They don't include the very newest weapons uh, from the new DLC, but I'm going to make an updated video with those soon. Um, but essentially, they go through the optimal attack patterns. Now, what's an attack pattern? Well, when you go and you look here in the armory, certain attacks might be advantageous compared to other attacks, right? So if you want to use a weapon, 
you want to make sure you that there are sort of shortcuts you can take to only using the good attacks and or at least as many of the good attacks for the thing you're doing and as few of the bad attacks so what that requires though is something called qq cancelling or block cancelling now qq cancelling and block cancelling which we have to cover really quick first is a method by which you can reset your attack sequence and in some instances you can actually attack way way faster one example of this would be to get let's see, uber albard don't mind the lightsaber that's just a mod so if we look in the armory at the Hellbard, there we there it is. If you can see the first attack here, it has pretty high infantry damage. It also has an linesman, which means it cleaves a lot, whereas light attack two and three, well, they don't really cleave a lot. If I'm fighting a horde, if, and I'm just light attacking, well, that's not gonna kill a lot of shit because you know all the stuff around me. However, if I light attack and block in between, then you can just keep doing this indefinitely and it's actually one of those things that with certain weapons depending on the weapon sometimes it'll be advantageous to to qq cancel which is weapon cancelling which is essentially the exact same thing only in, except here what i'm actually doing is instead of blocking i'm switching weapons so I, i'm either double tapping q or in my my case because uh, i have equip ranged and equip melee as two different buttons right so what i'm doing here is actually Oops, if I could uh, stop failing. It's actually, I'm doing a double swap, right? So you're double swapping back to your range weapon, and then, uh, no, to your range weapon, and then back to your melee weapon, again, in order to cancel the sequence. Now, in this particular instance with the help art, it's way easier to use block cancelling. Um, and essentially, it's one of those things that is better the more attack speed you have. So, here, how now that I have Swiss laying on, I can actually attack even faster. Oh, of course it went off while I was scrubbing around. There we go. See? Attacking way faster. Now that's just one instance. That's just one example. There are a multitude of different uh, ways to do this that are more effective. It could be the one-handed sword, for example, where if you look at the attacks, armory uh, versus armored, you really like to get light attack three, but you really don't want light attack one and two. Well, that's the wrong one. I can, it just happened to fit what I was talking about. You really want light attack 3, whereas you don't want light attack 1 and 2. Heavy attack 1 and 2 also seems fine. So what you can do is you can do heavy, heavy, light. That gives you heavy attack 1, heavy attack 2, and light attack 3. Boom. That way you all of the, your attacks deal armor damage, and you could do that versus an armored enemy. And thus you don't have to go through light attack 1 and 2 first to get any armor damage. And again, that's just another example of how you can sequence together your attacks. It could be the elf and the spear. And that there are a multitude of ways to, to, to combo these things together. And of course, when it comes to attacks, we have a couple of different varieties, right? Because that's also important to know. We have light attacks, you have heavy attacks, and light attacks usually go one to five. I believe the new javelin introduces a light attack five as the only weapon in the game, but it's mostly gonna be Three to four light attacks that a weapon has and heavy attacks one to three then you have the push attack or push block attack as some call it and then you have lastly the weapon special attack which is a completely separate thing that isn't listed in the armory and it's a separate button that you have to go put in here weapons you need to find this one weapon special and you need to set it to a key and a, an example of that would be on the rape here where you can do this another example of it would be the uh the rapier where you can do this while you're blocking, you see you're never going to stop blocking. I'm actually blocking the whole time here. So at no instance here am I not blocking. That's the practicality of the weapon special here. But really, the idea with weapon sequences, again, is to maximize your DPS for the thing you're doing. So if I'm fighting a horde and I'm using a spear, you can see there are certain attacks, like light attack 3, that's really good. These two have very low cleave, 1 and 2, so I want to avoid them. I also want to avoid this one. Whereas the push attack... Well, that's pretty good, you know, that has a decent amount of cleave, and the so does the first heavy attack, right? So one thing I could do is, like, heavy attack, cancel. But the problem with that, that the heavy attack in this instance is a little bit slow. And uh, the way its attack timers are set up means that, you know, it's not that quick, right? You could also do a push block attack into a double light. That means two out of your three attacks have cleave. That's pretty practical. 
And if you wanted to do the exact same thing, but for armor damage, well then really it's a different set of attacks that you want to maximize for. And so you'd be doing a light, heavy light, heavy light, constantly getting that good armor attack, right? But that's essentially attack sequences, QQ cancelling and block cancelling. Then you have input queuing and input timing. Now input queuing and input timing is about when it's best to do your inputs in order to maximize the speed at which the action is performed. Now depending on your settings here, when you have input buffer and priority input and what's an input buffer? Well, if I were to set this to zero, for example, right? And then double click my left click, then I would only ever do one attack. So it is essentially the window in seconds uh, in which you want any given action to be queued together with any given other action. And then you have the priority input buffer, which is things like weapon canceling. So the window in which you want a priority action to be considered uh, to be queued together and thus be the next thing that happens and you definitely want that to be the case because you really want weapon you know weapon swapping that is a priority act that should be a priority action at all times because if i'm trying to switch from my ranged weapon to my melee weapon that's pretty important right because otherwise i'm gonna get hit in the face so uh, and essentially this is all about how to most how to optimize inputs so that uh, so that they happen at the best possible time, or as quickly as possible, right? <clears throat> so when you queue two actions together, they automatically have the least amount of possible time in between. So double clicking, for example, there's there's no window in between the, these attacks here, right? There's no wasted opportunity, right? Because I'm just spamming, and they get queued together uh, as quickly as possible. But you might uh, there might be instances uh, when you have a high attack speed or when you're swapping weapons and such where it actually matters when you're clicking because you want to do it at the right time in the actual animation. One example of this, uh, where you actually cancel an animation, is uh, with the ranged attack. Let's go with the Huntsman. This is the most sort of exaggerated example I can think of. Uh, just to, you know, make it clear, I've also talked in more detail about this exact thing in another video that's called Ranged Mastery Mechanics, so you can watch that as well if you want to get into more detail. But uh, essentially, by forcing in a reload a little bit quicker, I can actually shoot faster. And you can see that if I were to do like this. And and spamming here is not the way to go. If I, if I were to spam, it's actually going to go slower. But if I double tap R right after taking the shot, then I'm actually maximizing hitting just the sweet spot which cancels the animation at the optimal time and thus performs the action as quickly as possible, if that makes sense. Moving on, we have dot damage, dot ticking. Now, dot damage in this game has a couple of different varieties. Now, in the, for the most cases, this is going to be very, very confusing, uh, especially since they added Sister of the Thorn. And why is that? Well, that is because normally <laughs> some attacks, right, such as the Sword and Dagger or the Dual Dagger, have a mechanic called Bleeds. That makes sense. You attack the target, bleeds. See, that's a bleed. But if you notice how the sword and dagger here has bleed on two attacks, two attacks. If I were to go one, two, three, see, it bleeds. If I were to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You know, my moron. These are the dual daggers. I'm a moron. Uh, hold on. <laughs> I'm definitely a moron. My bad. Here we go. One, two, three. Bleeds, right? Or ten and a half damage. One, two, three, four. Bleeds. Or ten and a half damage. But if I were to go one, two, three, four. Bleeds for ten and a half damage. What does that tell me? That tell me that tells me that bleed does not stack. However. If I were to go now on the sister, oh wait, I'm already on the sister thorn. Uh, I know, it's a very structured video, okay? Now, if I were to go grab the debut staff and I would then read here, critical strikes make the target bleed. I'm gonna be thinking, hey, but wait a second, bleeds doesn't stack, right? Because it then you'd be wrong. If I were to do like this, it very much stacks. So that's super confusing, right? Because then you also have other dots such as uh, Sienna and her flaming dot. And her flaming dot very much does not stack. 
with itself. That is to say, I'm not conf I'm not adding more dot right now. I'm just reapplying the same dot and refreshing the timer. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep adding dot. It, you know, it's not gonna keep burning faster and faster. It's just re refreshing the timer on the burn, which is the general rule that has just been broken by Sister of the Thorn. So I don't know, right? And you can stack burn with bleed, but normally you can't stack two of the same dot modifiers with itself. That's the general rule of thumb. And depending on which attack, they're going to burn at different rates. So they're going to tick, the, the word technical term, they're going to tick at different rates. So some dots might tick very fast, some might tick very slow. The dot damage is going to depend on your power. Uh, it, it, it's a whole cesspool, trust me. Then we have movement speed and attack boxes and damage reduction. Plenty to get through still. Now damage reduction now stacks with itself multi multiplicatively. In other words, um, in other words, each incremental damage reduction you have takes the previous into account, giving you less and less value the more damage reduction there is. If you take 100 damage, you have 50% damage reduction, you now take 50 damage. If you then have another 20% uh, another damage reduction, well then now it's 20% of 50, right? Because you were going to take 100 damage, you reduce that to 50, now it's 50, now it's 20% of 50, not 20% of 100, right? So 20% of 50, now uh, that is going to be 10, so that's 10, which means you would then take 40 damage from the 100, uh, 100 damage hit, despite the fact that combined you had 70% damage reduction. So that's how damage reduction works. Then we have attack boxes. Now attack boxes are... Uh, See here, I don't think, no, nope, that mod, as far as I recall, is broken, unfortunately, because I used to have a mod for this to show it off a little bit better. Um, but essentially, an attack box is sort of the, the area in which a minion, when it performs attack, <coughs> an attack, is actually hitting you. That attack, for example, is a large square on the screen, okay? So knowing those attack boxes makes it easier to know when you can safely dodge. Because what can happen with some enemies like Maulers, for example, is their animation moves forward sometimes when they're attacking. And because of that, when they then sort of do their attack, you can actually get hit right behind them. Now, this is not a Mauler. Let me just make that uh, that clear in case it was confusing. A Raider is what's also known as Mauler. So here, I could have actually gotten hit right behind it. And usually the attack boxes are, are just squares, right, right? Rectangles. That's just a good way to visualize how the attack actually works. And that can potentially make it easier for you guys to dodge. Oh yeah, we completely forgot to talk about dodging, of course. Dodging... <laughs> Hold on a sec. Now, dodging uh, is determined by your weapon. Now, I found out the most, the weirdest thing ever, okay? I found the weirdest thing ever on Sister of the Thorn. Which is that her ulti has its own dodge parameters. You see how, right now I have six effective dodges. Oh wait, let me just get a ranged weapon that I have. Let's see, okay, so you see, uh, my effective dodges are the one, you know, the, the number shown right above my health. Uh, effective dodges are the, the amount of dodges you can perform in a row before they start to become ineffective, aka slow down massively. See, so they get worse and worse until you're barely moving, right? Now that's determined by the weapon you have equipped. In the armory, assuming you have that mod, which you should totally get, by the way, one of the best mods, is that uh, it's determined by these numbers down here. It can see, uh, used to be though, yeah, effective dodge count here, 100, because one-handed sword. But on most weapons, it's going to be somewhere between 1 and 6. Uh, you can see here, dual daggers, 6. And then next to it, you can see a number, 35%. That is the extra distance you get for dodging with this weapon. Usually it's going to be way higher for melee weapons, especially like mobile melee weapons, whereas shielded weapons usually have uh, less dodges and, and sort of slower dodges. Uh, and the same goes for ranged weapons. Most ranged weapons, the elf is a bad example in that case, but most ranged weapons, Razor Pistol is also a bad example, but most ranged weapons only have a single dodge with a 0% with a zero percent modifier, but it does vary slightly from weapon to weapon. Now, if you notice me holding my ulti here, it says two out of two. I've never seen an ulti that had its own dodge. Per Maybe I just never noticed. But like, because like neither of my weapons have a two out of two. So holding down her ulti changes my dodge? I legitimately only found out about this like a couple of days ago. I was like, wait, what? That makes no sense. Why is it telling me two out of two? Well, that's even weirder, right? 
But essentially, that's mostly what you need to know about dodging. Of course, there's the extra parameter of playing a handmaiden, uh, which will increase your, you know, she has a talent, which increases your dodge even further, which, which is added on top of her, of her, uh, of her weapons dodge, uh, dodge metric. And those two added together, and then you have the total dodge, which is why she can move so fast, simply by dodging. Whew. Also, you can actually do something where you, <laughs> you can even do a cancel, a QQ cancel when dodging, if you want to dodge faster. It's a little bit complicated, so uh, I would not suggest most of you, you, you guys will see JSAT do that from time to time, for example. It only works on, it's only worth it, sorry, with uh, when you have an extremely good dodge. But essentially you can do like a quick QQ cancel, uh, which, uh, and if you do it correctly, you can actually dodge even faster. Um, but yeah, I don't suggest that most players try that out. It's just a way to move a little bit faster while you're dodging. And it sort of kind of requires that you have dodge on your scroll wheel and not uh, where I have it, which is my shift. But I just thought I'd let you guys know about let you guys know about the mechanic uh, nonetheless. Then we have yeah movement speed and breakpoints. Now movement speed, movement speed is uh, sort of pretty straightforward. The importance of movement speed is not so much that you're running faster, which may sound weird, but the importance is hitting movement speed breakpoints, which is sort of like like. You want to be able to run in a straight line sometimes without getting hit in the back. That's pretty much the importance of movement speed. Also being able to keep up with your group so you don't want it to be too low. But it has no intrinsic value in of itself other than sort of the the, the other than the, the, the clutch factor, right? Actually being able to be mobile can be extremely important. It doesn't really provide value in of itself. Because you, you know, minions don't die from it. But it's about keeping yourself alive. And at certain movement speeds, which can be affected, by the way, by your attack speed and the attacks you are doing. And depending on your attack speed, certain weapons will have different combinations of attacks that will be the most optimal combination of attacks to perform in order to increase your movement speed as much as possible. And there's a whole, if you guys look at Reddit, there's like a whole, whole sheet, like a whole Google Docs document showcasing the optimal attack sequences for different weapons with different attack speeds in terms of movement and uh, but this is getting like real deep right that, that's like <laughs> we're not gonna go that deep in this video i'm sorry uh maybe we'll we'll make a video about that some other time where we can go through all of the weapons but for now just trust me like usually light attacking is just the way to go some weapons it's weapon special ask other people see what they do see what the, the you know all the pros are doing or whatever you want to call them uh, and then copy that right and, and then leave it at that like it's not that complicated and most of the time it's not necessary um, to do it outside of that. But I would suggest that all of you, actually, when you are moving, don't run like this. You should, you should almost never run like this. There's almost no scenario where running like this is acceptable. At any point in game when you're playing, always do something to increase your movement speed. That by default. You might as well make it a habit. I know some people find it annoying to look at, but trust me, over time you'll get used to it and it's just better you move faster okay <laughs> moving on what else did i have i have breakpoints of course breakpoints again just a quick uh, recap on what breakpoints are breakpoints is uh taking your weapon damage which you can see like uh let's go for the longbow just i want to equip let's go which one longbow so a longbow it deals an amount of damage 37 now if i want to hit a, a, a breakpoint that might be the headshot breakpoint which would be separate from it a uh, body shot breakpoint and a breakpoint is just comparing the damage output to a minion's health in order to find out how many percentages exactly i would need in extra power to one shot or, or maybe to two shot depending on what we're talking about but but in order sort of the, the most optimal amount of power i need to one shot that special right i talk about breakpoints a lot breakpoints are super important it's a way to optimize your build so that with Let's say some 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 weapons and on some classes might need only 10% scale in and you can one shot all specials, right? So when then why would you have 20%, right? Then you might as well use that extra slot for a power versus chaos. Some example, but that's what breakpoints are. They're just a way to, to measure sort of the optimal power needed, optimal power uh, inputs in relation to the difficulty you're playing on, in relation to the health on that difficulty, in order to maximize uh, or sort of reduce the amount of hits and shots you need to one-shot any given minion, or to have as, as few attacks as possible on any given minion. 
that's pretty much it. <laughs> That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was very uh, superficial in terms of the in-depth, but again, I thought it was practical to just gather a bunch of the stuff I've told you guys over the years, hopefully at least, that I've hopefully taught you over the years, um, in a single video where we just covered the basics, just to, you know, get it, make it easier for newer players to just get at the base mechanics. Regardless, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like, comment, and subscribe if you did, otherwise don't. But that doesn't matter, because as always, I love you guys, stay awesome, peace out!